Hello and welcome to Free Cheese, episode 343. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Matt Sellner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. I read a shirt the other day that was in French, and my French is terrible, and I translated it, and I thought it said, the juice that divides our darkness, but it turns out it says when night turns into, when day turns into night. Just kind of close. You know what I mean? Contextually speaking. Yeah, yeah, same thing. But they're like, je eat or whatever the fuck. I thought that was juice. How do you say juice in French? Juice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, how's your how's your juicy week going, Matt? Uh, all right. Well, I can tell you I've been to my house. Yep. My girlfriend's house. Yep. Here. And the grocery store. I've been here. I'm in the vet. Earl had a cough. Mm. Not that kind of cough. Mm-hmm. He had something stuck in his throat, and he was trying to hack it up so much that he gave himself, like, a sore throat. Oh, I'll tell you the... This, this just came to me. Let me show you my investment this week. Oh, Jesus. So, I've been playing the stock market a little bit, you know, downtime. Buyer's market, if you got the money. Yeah, and yeah. I do, thankfully. I'm in a good spot. Um, I had, like, a dollar sixty four left of what they call buying power, which is just free cash in an app. In, sure. In Robinhood is the one I use. Uh, and I was like, ah, I gotta do something with it. I just don't want to linger here. So I went into the cryptocurrencies of the world. Oh boy. And I found one mm-hmm. that was like sharing for God, like like a thousand of these made up like a dollar or something like that. And I was like, oh great, a good penny stock. So I got myself the good dog coin. What the fuck? With oh, the- Doge coin. Oh yeah, Doge, sorry. There you go. I, yeah. Uh, I have about like with that dollar eighty four, I have about like eight thousand shares or something like that. I, well, it's down market. All right. I figure when everything goes up, I'll make a dollar off of this. Okay. Yep. Yeah, fuck. Why not make Doge. a buck? Got, got my Doge coin with the make Shimu a fucking buck. Emu. I, you got to keep me posted on how this uh, plays out. Well, I've already lost two cents. Yeah. Well, it's okay. Things are gonna get yeah. worse before they get better. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Speaking of getting better, Earl is fine. He's got to give him a little antihistamine. Mm. Back to normal. Good. All good. Speaking of back to normal, last week we talked about the Coke box. This week, crack them mm. one open. I haven't had shit out of that Coke box, except for the uh, coffee. So right here, live on the air, we're going to try this Ooh. Pina Colada Fanta that is 230 calories per bottle. Hell yeah. yeah one sip is uh, 69 calories probably. How is it? Not bad. So Fanta is a soda, correct? Yeah. So this is a soda pina colada. Yep. How's it's that? It's caffeine free. This is this is. I, I don't hate it. You gotta like pina colada, which I like that flavor. You know what I mean? That pineapple coconut taste. Yes, I do too. If you like that, I think you'd like this. Hmm. It's got a hundred percent natural flavors, man. Oh, good for Coke. Uh, including carbonated water and high fructose corn syrup. That's a Got natural em. flavor. Got them. Speaking of natural flavors. Kind of. A little bit. Yeah. We've got some video games we played in the last week. I'm sure. I'm not sure. I know. Because we talked ahead of time. And now we're going to talk to you about what we've been playing. Uh, Doom Eternal. Let's do it. I've been playing the stock market. It's called Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> Just the what fucking website is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, uh, we've been playing some Doom Eternal. You beat some Doom Eternal. I yes, this morning as of recording, I finished the campaign Dang. of Doom Eternal on Archer Violence. All right, so I'm gonna. I've had a rough week with Doom Eternal. Honestly, I've spent most of my free time with Animal Crossing. I will tell you this: the I sorted the. I can't tell how long I've played Animal Crossing because the Switch doesn't understand numbers yet until not for 10 days, days. yeah yeah, yeah 10, for 10 but you can sort by playtime and mm. i can see that this has now surpassed my time with mario odyssey which i know is like 30 ish hours uh and it's creeping up on ring fit which i just crossed the 40 hour mark on in the last week or so interesting so i'm almost to 40 hours in animal crossing and it's barely been out a week i'd be curious to see where my playtime's at once we get there 
I bet it's probably further along than you think. I do have this the parental controls app, so I can kind of see like mm, yeah, that's right day by I day. Don't have that. And I did rough math in my head, and I'm definitely in the mid 30s with it. But um, but I found myself going to Animal Crossing more because Doom was really pissing me off earlier in the week. <laughs> just to be blunt about it, like I spent the early part of the game just super overwhelmed and feeling like super weak along the way. And we took the dogs for a walk, like, early part of the week, like, Monday or Tuesday or something. And I was like, you know, I was telling Katie about it. I was like, I just, the last game did such a great job of making you feel like you were powerful and you were always in control. You know what I mean? Like, it was tough, but you knew, I'm the fucking Doom Slayer. This is what I do. I can do this. And it was just a matter of, like, shoot, glory kill, shoot. Like, you knew how to move through. And this game, there's so many systems. There's so many upgrades. And it's not anything that's optional. Like, the last game, it was like, hey, here's this thing. You can use it for this. It was, this game is, hey, here's this thing. You have to use it for this. Right? Like, you, any of the enemy types that come at you, you have all of these different, not all of, sorry. You have very few ways to combat each big enemy type. Right? Like, if it's the arachnid, you have to destroy its turret. Otherwise, it's going to fuck you up. And you have, what, two major ways of doing that? Right? Like yeah, the, the, the shotgun thing, which is actually part of that yeah. uh, master, master challenge. Yeah. And then the sniper shot from the machine gun. It's like you, that's the only way to, to get rid of that. Um, and it, it again, like on its own, those things are fine. But I feel like early on, this game throws three arachnids at you at once with four mermen slithering around. Like it, it's every enemy. It's like, hey, here's a new enemy type. Here's how you counter this. Okay, now here's 30 of them. Go. And it's just a lot of go, 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 go. And it, it was really, really overwhelming. And I, it made me feel like I was an idiot for most of this game. Like, I was like, all right, I'm just bad at video games. Like, I'm just not good at this. This I'm, I suck. This sucks. Everything sucks. And I did finally sit down and just poured time into it. And I think that is the answer, is just spending time with it and getting to know it. Then you get better at it. Because early on, there was some fight, and I dropped down the difficulty... And I was just like, fuck this. I hate it. And I felt shitty about having to drop it down, too, which I didn't like. You know what I mean? Like, didn't like anything yeah, this game was yeah. doing. And after I got through that, I was running through the next level and forgot to bump it back up. Which I do love that it's dynamic. Like, you can just, on the fly, go as hard as you want or as easy as you want. Um, kind of. There's limits to that. But, yeah. Being able to do that felt good. But in that next level, when I was, I hadn't bumped it back up, like, the enemies were like boring as shit and it wasn't until like the next fight where i was like or the next like crazy big room fight where i was like feeling it again um but i I think ultimately the game suffers from too much internal play testing like i feel like this is a game where they started making it they said how do we follow up the last game what if we added platforming cool they had a whole team work on platforming they're like dude this feels fucking cool and like okay what if we added uh this grenade launcher what if we added this flamethrower what if we it was all of those things and i feel like the more that they played it and the better that they got the more they kept challenging themselves to you know hey what's a new system we can add in what's a new system and it wasn't it doesn't it just doesn't feel good for a new player jumping into this world where it's just like there's no the ramp up is so quick right oh yeah it, it's like it just goes and as i approach the end of the game I totally appreciate it. And I feel badass now. Like, I feel powerful now. But that disconnect between the lore, the whole game, saying how badass the Doom Slayer is and how rad he is, and me, like, watching the fucking loading screen for the 30th time in an hour because it's just, like, I took two steps the wrong way and got slithered and didn't throw the ice bomb quickly enough or didn't switch back to the frag grenade or didn't switch from the mini missiles to the snipe. Like, it's just all of those things. Boom, 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 boom. And now, again... I'm near the end game. I feel good. Like I have the majority of the weapon upgrades, majority of the Praetor suit upgrade. Like I'm there. Yeah. And I've also learned how to play the game and how the game wants me to play. And I've gotten better at it, but I'm not going to say that like, it was not a slog the first bit. Um, and I do, I feel like, I think I've used this analogy before, but it's like when your favorite band puts out a new album, and it's weird, and you're like, I don't know if I like this. Like, I really like that last one. And you keep listening to the new album, and you're like, 
no, no, they're doing some good shit. Like they grew here. Like they really did something cool with this. Like this one part in this one song is kind of weird, but you know, and then you learn to appreciate that too for what it is. And I'm feeling that a lot with Doom Eternal where I'm like, this is growth. This is evolution. This is the next step they needed because this does feel like the total marriage of 2016's Doom and like what you had in like Quake 3, right? Like it's just like hyper fast, but also still like heavy in that way yeah. that, Do- that Doom 4 was. And it, I I really, really love the game. Again, I'm not done, so I'm sure that'll only strengthen as I get further in. And then going back, like I did my first Slayer Gate finally. And like pulling that off was just like, yes, fucking like, mm-hmm. and that's when you know how to move through a stage. And I think, I think a lot of it is the level design too. Cause there's been moments, especially like some of the levels with like the tentacles popping out of the ground. I'm just like, you get stuck on something or a mancubus gets you stuck in a corner or some shit. And you're like, fuck this. Yeah. Like that wasn't my fault. Like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but the Slayer gates, the way that those are like these perfectly constructed little rooms, it's just like everything fits in the way and it's like they will throw a lot of shit at you but you kind of know like okay well i'm here i can go here jump jump swing jump dash like it, you can piece everything together in that way it's a lot it's a fucking lot and it looks cool like it's you know what i mean like you can look at it from afar and just be like this looks badass even if you're doing the most mundane shit and i think that's really cool but it is a fucking learning curve it, all right, I'm glad you came around because the entire time you sat there saying like I don't know, there's all these systems. I, I, I my first thought was you're wrong. I <laughs> no, feel like I, I feel like from the beginning to the end of this game, it's been the perfect follow up. And like whenever I play shooters, I have a terrible tendency of forgetting that I have a gr- like a stun grenade. Yeah, like, I can't tell you how many times in Warzone I probably should have threw a stun grenade before going into a room, but I didn't, and yeah. I, I died because of it. This game made me rethink everything. And yes, I died a lot along the way, but it's part of the challenge, right? The yeah. original Dooms are hard. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's, this is not a new thing for Doom to be so hard. And yeah, we're on not the normal difficulty. I put that in quotes. We're on the, I guess, the hard. hard. Yeah, if there's. Quote, and then yeah. the hardest, and then that fucking one life, good luck bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I. From beginning of this game to the end of it, I thought it was the perfect. Uh, you say the learning curve. I, I think it was the perfect amount of new stuff, re- like and then like the mastery of that stuff. And there's only like one or two encounters or room where I'm like, probably not your greatest work, but man, I, I enjoyed every minute of it. And like I know you say there's all these new systems, but really only like two things, right? You have to manage your ammo. And you, armor, it like you have to use the flamethrower. Once you remember, you have those two things, yeah. and you figure out this poetic way of doing it in each of these rooms. And I think that's where I got to. Yeah, it, it was that I, the chainsaw thing still pisses me off because I feel like I never have enough fuel when I need it. You know what I mean? But then I'm like, but I like that's where the game's forcing you to use all your weaponry. I think, and I think that's where they want it. No, that's at the point where I've, like, exhausted the weaponry, and then I'm, like, there's the only thing left in the room I don't have enough chainsaw fuel for. But then I've gotten better at learning, okay, well, there's an imp over there I need to... I'm going to say, there's always an imp. Yeah. It's just a matter of where. And I know some of those, some of those encounter rooms do go, like, three fours or whatever, and it gets kind of tough to find it, but there always is something you can chainsaw. It's it's definitely, like, again, by the end of it, now I'm, like, okay, I get it. I literally, I mean, I, you just said I completed the game, I think, twice... I used more than one chainsaw fuel on a on a thing. I never chainsawed the heavies. Never. I never needed to. I did by accident once. I don't think I ever did. I think there was like one time, and this is like super late in the game. I realized I had three just because the 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 drops and the encounters and stuff yeah. like that. I had three, and I was uh, one of those green mancubus guys. It was right in front oh, of me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not have my blood punch ready to go. Yeah. So I was like fuck. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, all right, here we go. We're back on That's track. Good. I got yeah. my health, or, yeah, I got, got ammo. Here we go. Start swinging on poles. But, like, the platform and stuff, yeah, it's a little tedious. It, I can see it being a little tedious. I enjoyed it. I also enjoy the way they use that to get to the secret rooms. I thought yeah, those, that, those that things was are clever. really good. I messed up. Uh, I think it's more my fault than the games, but I did not realize what the Sentinel batteries were for. 
Oh. So I've been missing all these secrets because of the Sentinel battery. I have like 14 just stocked up, ready to go, and I completely fucked that up. And I was like, dude, why do I have 14 of these things, and I can't use them for upgrades? And I was like, oh, they're for the world. Like, I like literally Googled what's yeah. the use of a Sentinel battery. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's why I'm missing all these things I can't get to. Wait, in the world? You mean in the fortress? Or Oh, yeah, whatever. You, you know okay. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought I thought you were saying there's places in the level to use them because I I've been putting them in things in the fortress to like open up the little yeah that's what unlocks. I'm not doing I sorry I, I I did say level but I meant like mm-hmm. yeah I'm not going around the I forget about that because doesn't that does that upgrade your stuff at yeah all? yeah you see I'm not it's like in the um in the fortress you have uh kind of like in the in the threshes of it there's little there's Praetor suit upgrades there's the uh, so far, I found two of the crystals that you use for. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't do any of that. Um, a couple things, like except that. the stuff that I think the t- t- like the tutorial put you through. Um, but man, I, I, I absolutely loved the campaign from beginning to end. Even those times where you die thirty times and you're sitting there starting to stew or whatever. Um, but yeah, I took a different approach with this game than the last one. The last one. I tried to do, like, my four-hour sessions and got through it. And I remember burning out despite liking the game a lot. So this time around, uh, I just kind of did, like, one or two levels a day. And that's all I kept it at. That way I always kept that drive to keep wanting to play it the next day or whatever. See, but even then I felt like I couldn't do a level in a day. Like, they're just so fucking big. Like, there's a lot to do. Do. Like there's I, mean, a, I mean, it's not. I mean, there's still it's still like an hour and a half play session. It's not like a half an hour play session, but you know, I'm working my way through it. Yeah. And then those times where I maybe would go to the next, I'm like, oh, I still want to keep playing. Yeah. And I go to the next thing, but the first encounter where I die like more than three times, I was like, all right, yep, that's where we're done for the day. Uh, we'll come back to this tomorrow. Yeah, I definitely had that, and I would bounce to Animal Crossing. At one point, I bounced to the Resident Evil Three demo, and I started working my way through that, and then I was like, ah, I don't feel this either. <laughs> Yeah, not it, it. It's really good. I'm not saying, mm-hmm. but I'm just kind of like, you know what? That game's out in a week. I'm I'm gonna see where I'm at with Doom, and then I might just buy that and jump into that. Yeah, um, yeah. There's very, there's very little I have to complain. Um, I would say even the totem fights. Uh, totem fights. Yeah, the ones where the buff totem is there, and you're oh yeah, just yeah, fucking die. Yeah, you don't get to like it. There's this different mechanic of you just navigating the level with all these things chasing you that can pretty much kill you with one bad step. Yeah. So it's like this mad dash of like quickly exploring the area you're in. Yeah. To find the buff total, man. But then there's this thing of like, and it's it's, it's a total mental thing. It really isn't much of the game, but like despite all those enemies, it could be the crawly boys, the pinkies, the the, the invisible pinkies. I forget. Well, I, I forget their. Oh uh, yeah, I forget their. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But like. You have all these things chasing you. You defeat the buff totem, and then all of a sudden you're like, "It's my turn it's, now." Yeah, now and then it's, yeah. You, it, it, and rockets and yeah, the no, minigun and chainsaws and the when you get to it, the sword. Like it's fucking incredible how that it's, fight just turns just like that. And every time I hit that buff totem and a little bit of health popped out, yep. I said, "It's my turn now, bitch." And yeah, like there go. should be like a fucking guitar riff that goes off when you do it in your head. Like, just well, like, there is. It's yeah. just constantly going on in the background. <laughs> I the last one I had of that I was pissed because as I was running through and just kind of like shooting things and moving and trying to find where the totem was, I ran out of ammo and things and it fucking automatically switched to the BFG and I was in yeah I just pulled the trigger and I mean wiped everything off the field but I like was moving so quickly I wasn't even thinking like ah oh, oh, fuck wrong gun you know what I mean like yeah that that kind of sucks but it is a setting you can change after you've done that like hmm. um. I think you can change the setting to like automatically swap to last gun or not. Oh. So I like, yes, that can happen. But if you let it happen more than once or twice, I think then it's on your fault because you can change that in the yeah, options. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. Um, I, I guess just being on PC, I've seen more of those options as I was going through adjusting my, yeah. my look and stuff, but and adjusting my keybinds. Yeah, but yeah, that's and, interesting. How but, does um, shit, I forget which one. How does the uh. How are you finding all of the – because for me, like, swapping between – you're always moving in this game. Yep. So you're for playing on PS4, left finger – left thumb is always on the thumbstick. Mm-hmm. To swap between the weapons, it's up on the D-pad, and the grenades, it's right on the D-pad. Ooh. Or left on the D-pad, which sucks. Yeah, that's not good. Like, it, it 
you're moving and you can't. You almost, like, I feel like with that, you would almost have to be like in midair or mid swing, changing your weapon. It's that, or I'm like crab clawing or some shit like that. Yeah, you know no, dude, I, mean? I have the fucking weapon wheel on my mouse. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Like, and I like hold it in and I like drag my mouse real quick where I need to go. The wheel itself, you hold R one and then pull the right stick in a direction, which that works. Yeah, but to change just between the secondary function, it's up on the D pad. To change grenades, it's left on the D-pad, and then now I have the... Yeah, it's like F and G on me. Like, F for the gun, and G for the grenade. Which, G is, like, universal for grenades, and that makes sense. F is close enough right there. Uh, I re-find it some things, like the sword. I've moved to the left alt. Okay. Like, yeah. uh, I try to keep everything closed. I think originally it was, like, farther away. Um, But, yeah, by the end of it, like... Everything, what, it went no farther than G. Oh, yeah, it was on V. I didn't like the placement on V, so that's where I moved it close yeah, to my far. thumb so I could. But, yeah, no, WASD, uh, pinky on shift, thumb on space bar, and I was uh, yeah. fucking having a ball. Yeah. Uh, I, the, uh, we, I said, like, the only bad thing, there was a couple bad things with the mechanics, the water mechanics. Mm. I understand why they tried it. It did not work. Uh, I died more times in the water than I did some of the intro boss, or uh, I keep saying boss, some of the intro encounters. Yeah. Which is not, I don't I, know, I'm the deuce, I'm the doom slayer and I'm dying by drowning. Drown, yeah, it's weird. I, like, I don't like, I, more so not because I didn't know where to go, but more so because. It just I, felt clunky. I, it felt clunky and I could never find the ledge. Like, I would do the thing yeah. and have to. Do the thing and just have to hop back up and land. Do the next thing, but I could never find a ledge. Like he wouldn't just climb, and you can't jump out of the water. I, no. That's the only, the only the bad part. Thing. I didn't love about the water stuff that I've encountered so far is like I know there are secrets down there that I'm missing, but I didn't have time to look for them because you're being poisoned as you're down there because it's yeah. you know radiated water or whatever. But overall, this is still you know what I mean. It's it's. And I almost had one complaint about the slow goo. Uh, they yeah. did one. They did one encounter that was mostly sl- uh, that goo yeah, on yeah, the yeah. outside on the in road. City, yeah. And I was like, if I see another one of these, I'm going to get real mad because it sucks. That was it. That was the last encounter yeah, the, in a yeah. slow goo. And I was like, all right, cool. They experimented with it. They made you do it. Now it's. Yeah. Yeah, it hurts, please. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I like that, though, because it was it was unique because it was all it just happened to be like all the charging dudes. It was no one that like shot at range, yeah. at least not initially. Yeah. So it was I, I think it was a clever little thing to like, hey, stay on these little bits of land. Yeah. It taught you how to use different weaponry and, and do different things with mobility in that that way. It was good. I, I really like the game. I'm excited. I'm going to wrap it up as soon as possible. Um, and I did try the multiplayer right before bed last night. Um Got my ass kicked because I was it was my first time. I'm like level nine in their little Did rank you up do system. The tutorials? No, I just jumped in. <laughs> All right. By the time I, lo- I looked at the clock and I was like, "Ah, oh, it's fucking late. I should go to bed. I'll try this real quick." And let me just queue up. I'm level nine in the thing, and the two people I get loaded in as Doom Slayer. The other two people playing as the monsters are levels like sixty six and eighty three. And I'm like, "Ah, all right." And then they're like. In the lobby, you can hear them talking, and they're like, what up, Cheese? And they're, like, talking to each other, and they're, like, going back and forth, like, okay, dude, so I'm going to run Mancubus this time, and if you – I'll run – you run Archvile, and then if we do this – like, they're going through their whole strategy, and I'm like, I am fucked. <laughs> and, but it, it's fun. You – I feel like the – I'm dying – slower in multiplayer than mm-hmm. I would in the same type of encounter in a, the single-player campaign. Um but it's still – it's super fast. It's super um, – it feels like you're playing Doom. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, that, that's the cool thing. Um, so I think I think one of the cool things you're going to see with that, with, especially if you're the Doom Slayer, are patterns. Uh, because I re- – like when I was playing through the campaign – I like once I got an encounter and I was in it for a couple times. Like, I kind of knew my pattern. Yeah. Uh, like I would have maybe the I would maybe deviate f- from it a little bit, but the same kind of like circle. Mm-hmm. And so like I wonder like as um, like a demon like if you would if you start to see that and just like preemptively just like oh they were because yeah. because that that's where I I don't know the maps that well but they did because as we were like loading in they're like oh I fucking hate this map and I'm like. I don't know and it. Like, and then I would find a path where I'm, like, safe. 
and then it was there's always somebody waiting just like fuck you. yeah i just like i think like uh anticipation on something like this for as quick as it is like it's very twitchy i think yeah. throwing someone off it would go a long way yeah uh but i'll keep messing with that a little bit uh doom eternal it's really good i, I know i started off this by being a little bit critical of it but it's just because it. I mean, it did. I think it's the per. I think it's the perfect sequel because it kept. It keeps the formula, but it adds systems in a smart way. Like I, I yeah. don't. I don't know how else they could have done this. No, they, you're totally right. And there, I don't. If they had done the first game again, it wouldn't have been. This wouldn't have been as good. And it's. It just sucks that it's taken me to almost the end of the game to really appreciate it, but. I'm happy that I did. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I just like I, I may have said this on air before, maybe back in like 2017. But like I, I, I did not want to be the person, the creative person that has to come up with a, a way to make a sequel, and and they, they did yeah. it. They, yeah. I think almost flawlessly. Yeah, I, I don't want to be the creative person again to try to try to make a sequel to this and expand upon it. Can I? I'm going to say something, not knowing anything about the story. I don't. You know what? No, because I don't even want to make eye contact with you while I say it, because I don't want you to give anything away because you beat it. All right. Yep. But don't say anything. I'm not going to look at you. I'm just going to get this on the recording, and then we'll move forward and talk about something else. I'm very curious to see if they tie the lore of this into the lore of Quake in some way, and string all of the id worlds together and something and if the next game is just going to be fucking quake that's it no more doom eternal talking not looking at you yet until we get full that is next all i'm game. gonna say da- i'm gonna say this i honestly have no clue and i well that answers the question <laughs> honestly i have no clue yeah well one i've never played a quake campaign so strike one two there is you maybe we should read codex entries I and have I, been. No, 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 I have been. All right, because there is something very specific about the final boss hmm. that ties, like, kind of like your journey together that I would have never gotten through the cutscenes. And it's because I read one little Codex entry. I was like, oh, 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 that's cool. And then I was like, the the fight meant a little bit more huh. than just right. than just the, it being the fight. All right, I get a badass. Yeah. But yeah, no, I have no idea. It could be buried in codex entries, but I just didn't read all of them. I was kind of expecting a definitive like. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, no, it did. It, it it did have that moment. Of, like you know, you jump into the portals and, and it, like to uh, go to the next world or whatever. Uh, there was a there was a part where uh, I, I won't say which character, but there's a character. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It says finishes. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We got. Yep, you went too far. Halo. Episode three four three. Oh, shit, is it really? Yeah, check that out. Uh, speaking of checking out, I believe you've still been checking out Call of Duty Warzone? Mm. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so uh, they uh, there seemed to have been a, a meta established in this game. Yeah, it was the race to uh, loadout get your grade. loadout. Yeah. yeah. Um, they... Uh, yeah, it was get your loadout, and then it kind of turned into this thing of like your perks become a big part of this too. So um, thermals and UAVs became a big part of, uh, well, thermals on your attachments for your guns. So that way you can like see people through objects and stuff like that. Not through objects, but like easier to, to see them in hills and stuff like that. Um, and then get buying UAVs from the buy station. So now the the meta, and I think it's still this, although it, there's a recent patch, which I'll get to in a second. Um, the meta was get two loadout crates. The one in perk slot two, there is a thing called overkill, which lets you wield two primary weapons. And a lot of people usually use some kind of sniper rifle or say something, something long range. And then something short range, like an SMG and a, or do like sniper rifle, assault rifle, kind of loadout, whatever. Um, and then you can kind of change the first and third to your preference, I guess. But then on the second loadout crate, what you want to do, uh, you can put more bullshit weapons or more situational weapons if you really wanted to, if you want to kind of plan that far out. Like uh, for me on my second loadout made for Warzone, I have a rocket launcher just in case. You never know. Hmm. Might see a vehicle right as I, at, you know, just those one off scenario, like one in a million, but I have it in case, you in need case it. I need it. Yeah. 
But the perk number two, instead of having overkill, you just have the standard, like, cold blood perk. I think that's what it's called. Where you can't be seen by UAV or thermal. Okay. But because of the way the pickup system works, I can pick up – I can pick back up my primary weapons – and it will still be, like, overkill without needing the overkill perk. That's a neat little, yeah. Yeah, so then you can't be seen by the meta, like, UAVs and the thermals. I like that because I always felt like I was, I'm already bad enough, so having another thing to help people hunt me down. So, yeah, so um, there used to be 4,500 for the loadout. And keep in mind, one loadout can equip your entire squad. That's fucked. So, um, you know, you can just... You know, if I got 2,000, someone else got 1,000, someone else got 1,500, boom, load out. That's the first one. Yeah. Then we start scouring for the next one. They've patched the game. That's actually dropped um, – I'm trying to remember my k days. Sorry. Friday. Yeah. Uh, this dropped on Friday. And so they add a couple of guns, a couple of like new commons, uh, the green weapon, like the next level up, uh, just like some semi-auto rifles, stuff like that. Uh, but the big patch or the big change is for the loadout cost is now eighty five hundred per loadout. Okay, so they upped it a little, bit, it a little bit, and it definitely does take a little bit longer to get to it. So pretty much the price of two loadouts is now one. Yeah, um, not much else has changed. I don't think they really did too much. Weapon I think that's good because from what you were saying last week, like it was very much like it's the race to that. And I ended up hearing it on I think at least one more, if not two more, podcasts in the last week. People talking about it and just saying that, like, yeah, it's just about, like, let's drop, let's get money, let's get the load out. Boom, boom. And, like, that just – it seems like that's not as fun as the actual gameplay. Like, it is, but if mm-hmm. you're the one on the receiving end of that rather than the, like, killing end of it. Yeah, because it kind of turned into, like, if you dropped in a bad spot, like, you had to, to migrate and then you were already behind. Um, so, like – like if you, if you eventually got it, you could catch back up, but like yeah. it's. I think it's cool you're able to adapt that quickly and change it. So yeah, so they they did that, and uh, we we played last night a little bit, and it, it definitely takes longer to get your to get the loadout. Um, you know, I don't see as many people. I don't see as many loadouts being called in around us as usual. Excuse me. Um. So. Like, it does slow down the game, and also, like, you know, then you have to make the decision as a squad, like, all right, do we go for the second loadout? Do we buy our, our um, kill streaks now? You know, we got we got into a fight. We got pretty banged up. Do we just take 1,500 of our funds and buy some armor plates for all of us? Like, yeah. you think about the next loadout a little bit more. The first, I th- at least for us, it seemed like we still wanted the first load out like sure as soon as possible and then yeah. we would like sacrifice armor and stuff like that to get the load out but after the first one it, it then became well all right should we get an airstrike should we get a uav right 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 uh, well bob he's kind of low in armor we can throw him some money get some armor plates like it, it you think a little bit more about the second yeah uh decision the major decision there um but yeah no, i i even before they changed, I was still having a lot of fun. Even, you know, if I got the loadout, didn't get the loadout, whatever. Uh, I still jump in and play solos every now and then. Yeah. Still primarily just play with uh, Nick and Bob or just Nick or whatever. But I, I still like it. It's still it's Call of Duty. But it's got that extra. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really well done. The Gulag. I've determined now that it's just like handguns and shotguns. They don't do like assault rifles or anything uh, like that. So I'm seeing the same kind of rollouts now. Um, but like... There's so many different ways to, to play that. Like, you can just sit at home and wait for the person. You can be ultra aggressive. You can kind of, like, like a stop go. You can wait for the grenades to go active before you start rolling. Like, it's, it's like a little battle of chess in a, in a weird way. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, if you can outthink your opponent, you usually win, even if your aim is not as precise as the other dude. What's it's, the tale on this? I, st- I love it. I think it's still the best one out there. I, I can see why people are, like, down on it because of that loadout thing. Yeah. But I think it I think it works in this game, especially now that it's 8,500. It, it, there's a little bit more decision-making uh, in, in the mid to late game on how you want to attack it. Do they need a new map yet? Or are you still... That's, it's tough to say because you have to now, now depend on... How you want to do it? Do you want to, uh, do you want to one map and keep changing it, or do you want to try to? Are you going to fracture your audience and do two maps or three yeah. maps or, or whatever? It, it's 
that's going to be a tough call. I don't think they need a new map yet, but like I'm not running it 80 times in one day. Yeah. I think it depends how much you're you're running it, but like I'm sure there's been little nooks and crannies in the map that I haven't seen yet, but like even I am starting to get to the point now where like between towns, like I see like the random settlement houses. I'm like, "Oh yeah, I remember those. There's usually a, a crate in here or I've seen a crate yeah. in here before or something like that." So That's good though cuz then I mean, I remember that with PUBG like getting not i never got way way but uh, as you got more into that and got to know it a little bit you do have that sense of confidence about you which in a game like that is fun because that confidence is immediately thrown out the window the second you you know hear a bullet fly by your head you're like what the fuck Where the yeah fuck? like we it's great because one game will finish fifth after like all these like close tense encounters like we'll each get like three or four kills take out like four squads or whatever and then we'll get fourth and feel pretty good about it or you know whatever and then we feel so good we're like ah fuck it we're gonna drop right into the hot spot and then we just immediately all Dead. die or yeah. in the gulag and just scrambling after that so that's fun it's you know it's 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 one of those uh, what else did you get into outside of Call of Duty Warzone? Animal Crossing. Yeah. Dude. I mean, I play more baseball, but I have nothing new to add. I've been playing Road to the Show. What's new in Animal Crossing for you? How do you... There's more of a game here than I thought there was. Uh, so what are you finding? Because I, I feel like this is the thing I could never articulate in a good way for you over the last four years. <laughs> so, like, I always thought, like, once you start it, and Tom Nook was like, all right, here's your house, here's your rent, and then as you pay the rent, you can get a bigger house. Like that, I kind of understood, and you're always constantly paying the rent. Yeah. Tom Nook's an asshole. We all know that. But I didn't realize there's these little objectives to do. Like, if you're logging in every day for a couple hours, you get an accomplishment and kind of get to the point where you wait a day, or you can time travel. I'm not doing that. It's yeah, no, no, no. But, like, you, there's, like, objectives every day. Yeah. I mean, it's not just the Nook miles, right? It's the... Yeah. Like... I, you know, I had to create three settlements for people to move in, and I had to uh, get all the materials, the resources, and build all the stuff for the interior and the exterior. Yep. And I was, like, I was actively, like, playing the game, like, getting the things I needed. Yeah, I, there's a I'm, lot to do. I'm there. not, like, pl- like, I probably have, I'm probably in the teenage hours of this game, if not more. Yeah. But I'm not, like customizing yet i don't feel like i need to i don't feel like i'm at that point i don't even feel like i'm at that point where i can get a good island i'm sure i could if i really you know kind of put my mind to it i'm sure i have enough yeah. recipes yeah probably but like i don't want to do that yet because yeah. i have these objectives in front of me like every time i think i get every time i think i'm done there's tom looks like all right well mr slave labor you go yeah. do this now like i built the bridge and i got the, the houses and uh i, I my residents are slowly moving in. I don't know what my next big objective is. I just got the customization kit for him. I took that workshop, built the wardrobe. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I, f- I forget what's next for me here, but I was at a point where I could stop. But, like... For me, once I did the customization workshop and all three people moved in, he said, hey, everything's going so great. I got to shut down for a day so we can turn this tent into a permanent building. Hmm. And that's where I'm at now. So I don't know what his next goals are. But. Yeah, as of recording, like, my second resident should be moving in today. Yeah. And by the time this goes up, I should be probably maybe where you're at, depending yeah. on how the game shakes out for me. Yeah. Um, I, uh, so last weekend, obviously, I put a bunch of time into it. Oh, even by the time we recorded the podcast, I already had, you know, I think 12 hours or so into it. I don't remember. Yeah, nuts. And then... I think Saturday night, I was playing and Katie came down and was just hanging out and watching me fish and fucking hit trees and shit. Like, whatever. Just yeah. passive. And she was, and we both realized it had been like an hour and a half, two hours. And she's like, how the fuck am I just staring at you do this for that? Like, she wasn't on her phone. She was just literally staring at the screen. And I'm just sitting there. And like, I don't think we were talking much. Like, we were just kind of like, whatever. And I was like, I can make you a character. You can run around on the island with me and catch fish. And she was like, yeah, man, whatever. So Sunday, she was like, hey, make me a character. All right. So I add an account to my Switch, get her a character on the island. We're running around and um, catching bugs, catching fish, getting her house or her tent set up or whatever. Um, and then she was like, oh, shit. So then, like, she would – she kind of mostly had control. Like, I gave her, like, the primary – when you're playing on a local Switch, like, someone's the primary and the yeah, other one's, yeah. like, the follower. So I was the follower for most of that and just kind of let her do her thing and explore the island and do everything I had just done the day before. <laughs> and 
we got to a point where she was like, okay, do what you got to do. I'll just kind of tag along. And she quickly like put the controller down as I was running around and doing things and picked her phone up. And then she's showing me Nintendo.com and like, which one should I get? <laughs> and then Monday she got the switch light. Uh, and I, you know, we got Animal Crossing on it and up and running. And then I think she's basically where I'm at now. Like she's pretty close. Like it's, she's been playing it almost as much as I, like the only time I'm taking a break for it is doom. And she doesn't have Doom to play, so yeah. she's really just, like, yeah, seriously. locked in on that. Um, and that's been fun, because it's been, like, her and I running back and forth to each other's islands and trading things, or, like, she really liked... One of the tasks I had for the, you know, moving villagers into the town was to build one of them a peach chair, and she was like, I want that fucking peach chair. So I made her a peach chair. That kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, like, I feel like the early stages of New Leaf were the last game on 3DS were so like do this and you you, you kind of can't do anything else today sorry and i feel like here even if i'm just catching fish there's still something to do mm-hmm. but you can always go to an island you can always go i don't know do whatever like i've and there's like new secrets i've been finding it's the last game it was wild because meverse was a thing so you could look there but like it's hard. Like, now Twitter is just me-verse, like, for Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, outside of, like, people yelling and being mm-hmm. mad, it's just Animal Crossing me-verse. And just seeing what everyone's doing, I'm, like, super inspired. Like, excuse me. I'm like, oh, shit. I got to go do that. Or this Spider Island thing. I got to find a Spider Island. Or uh, the money um, money tree. Found out about that. Didn't know that was a thing. Have you seen that? Like, when you shake a tree and money just keeps falling out? Oh, man. Have you seen a glowing spot in the ground before? Yeah. You dig it up, there's bells inside. Mm-hmm. If you have at least 10,000 bells on you, oh. you plant 10,000 bells in the glowing spot right while you're standing there. That makes there. sense why it's still glowing then. And yeah. in three days, it becomes a money tree filled with money. It's only a one-time money tree from what I see. But mm. there's usually a glowing spot each day. So each day you can... What's the return on investment? Don't I mean, know. See, that's the thing. 10,000 bells is a lot of bells. I'm only getting 11,000 back. No, it might be 30, dude. There's, All right. I, when I, I saw mean, if there's, there's a good return on investment, I'm going to do it. There's three bags. I think mine should be ready, so we can check All right. and, and find out. Um, the the Dogecoin do nothing for me, but if I got the... <laughs> but if you can get the bells. <laughs> uh, but no, I've had a lot of fun like making custom designs. I've been making different sprite work and stuff like that to hang on the wall. Um, I've been doing custom furniture now, like... Made a new bedspread. I found out you can buy a magazine. You can customize the size of magazines. So that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, last week, when we recorded, we hadn't visited islands yet. But prior to Katie buying a Switch and really knowing, now she gets it. So me and Mark decided to meet up. And then our friend Joe, who's been on the podcast before, Joe... Saw that we were on as well, and he, or maybe Mark invited, I can't remember, either way. Joe jumped in as well, um, and we're all doing voice chat and hanging out and having a great time, and Joe had his voice chat set up uh, through the magnificent Nintendo voice chat app uh, with his boyfriend as well, so like we're all kind of talking, just having a good time, whatever, and then we're letting you know, hey, come hang out, and I think you needed nuggets, iron I need nuggets. The, the, yeah, I need iron for the store, for Nook's Cranny. So... On audio, I said to all them, like, all right, I'm opening my gate. I got a bunch of shit waiting for Blathers to wait to open up. Don't touch my shit. <laughs> but come on over. I say that to them. I text you and say, gate's open. You come over. And I'm down here on the fucking headset with them. Katie's upstairs. And you come in, go right for the fossils, and just start picking up fossils. And I'm screaming. I knew, I knew you were purposely waiting for Blathers. I, I, I just wanted to fucking scare you, piss you off. I was screaming, what the fuck? What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> and Katie's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Like, she thought something happened to one of the dogs or something. And I was like, this motherfucker. She's like, what's wrong? And I was like, he's stealing all the fucking fuck. I got him in a pile for blathers. <laughs> just so mad. Um, oh, shit. What happened there? Uh, I got a jar of shit that uh-huh. I kicked. <laughs> yeah. It's all the leftover yen I have from Japan. Oh. And, a, yeah, I... Um, no, I, I knew exactly what I was doing. I, it wasn't like an accidental pickup. No, I was like, oh, he's saving this shit for blather. I'm going to fucking scare him. Bloop, bloop, well, then bloop. We That's had, why I ran around the corner hiding. I didn't even <laughs> see. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> also, I love the outfit too. <laughs> Just like wife beater and jeans. Um, I've got a good screenshot on my switch of you when you were leaving <laughs> and you waved goodbye and I caught the screenshot right as the circle's closing in on your head. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, I have a long-term goal of doing something special cause I have an island on my island. Yeah. And I, the, the point is islands to be a sanctuary. There's going to be no bridges, nothing. You're it's only accessible by the fucking the pole. Stick, yeah. yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, I've been doing little stupid things. Like, whenever I get a pair of pants, don't put them on. Just hang them on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I Now have, you're playing Animal Crossing. I only have two pairs of pants right now. The ones you sent me, the camo ones. You're welcome. And a pair of jeans. <laughs> yeah. But whenever I get a pair of pants, just run, run on the wall. I fucking love that. And that, too. Like, <laughs> and then Victoria comes over. She's like, what? Why don't you have pants on? Like, they're dry. They're on the wall. Yeah, they're sweat. Yep. You know? Yeah. It's been a hard day's work hitting the rocks all day. There's a lot more you can hang on the walls in this, which it sounds like a weird thing, but like there's those little things for customization. Like before, you couldn't just put furniture outside mm-hmm. the way you can now, and that's that's a neat thing. One of my villagers gave me this like cool looking stone lion dog statue, so I have that like next to my house. And then I bought a chalkboard menu and put that outside of my house too. Like it's a fucking dumb restaurant. I know, I know, I care about this game because I didn't just dump those exterior items on the ground i like specifically yeah. put them yeah. and twisted them to the so way aligned, i yep. wanted them yep and like i put like the one chair looking out towards the pond yep. i put the one chair and the table like facing you so that way like you could see like the person eating or sitting down or whatever i was like like, it. like the swinging like at first i just threw it down and it was like awkward off to the side i was like no 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 and so i had to move this Pick it up, I position myself perfectly, and do a little adjustment. So then, after I did that, I was like, I kind of care about my I'm gonna, Yeah, a <laughs> little bit. There is a sense of pride in it, and, like, putting together, I don't know. Like, I, I fucking, I'm starting to get happy with the way my house looks. Like, not totally. I've got dumb carpet in there now, just because I don't like any of the carpet options I have, but. I pre- um, I precisely put those plots of lands, too, like, right next to each other, so that way they can be neighbors and hate each other. Yep. And then I purposely put them between my house and tom nook because fuck tom nook he's yeah, not he's gonna go yourself. get his taxes from those neighbors first and when i see him coming i'll run to my <laughs> sanctuary island my Fine. island on an island he can't access because he doesn't have a pole because he's too busy holding a beer always dude pants off beer in hand yeah That's beer he's got tom nook way so i didn't realize the stuff next to him i think can vary from game from like island to island like my my time look has like golf club and like little putting center that's what mine has yeah oh okay victoria said she didn't huh she didn't have it or she didn't maybe she didn't realize it i don't know it might be different i know there are differences between each little island each little game but yeah i'm like this motherfucker sitting here with a beer probably putting while i'm giving him all my goddamn bells he didn't give a fuck yeah i it's the thing that i try and do is like I make sure I start and I go to the shops each day just to see, like, all right, what what can I only get today? What's happening? Um, I'm buying shit that I don't want just because I want to fill out my catalog. You know what I mean? Yeah. To a certain extent. Or I'm like, ooh, I don't want this in any of the rooms I have now, but I know I'm going to want it when I have a basement. Yeah, just buy or, it, yeah. stick it in the storage or whatever. Um, and then I am I usually look for dumb shit to send to both of you, you and Mark specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's too good. Um. Oh, I was about to say something. I forgot. Shit. No, oh, yeah, no, I um, I like doing like little like because you know all the all the ins and outs of Animal Crossing, right? So I accidentally chopped down all my trees, thinking they would grow back. They don't. Yeah, I forgot that too. So the entire front part of my island was just stumps, and yep. Victoria was like, "You know, these aren't going to grow back." Right? I'm like, "Ah, oh, shit." So slowly, been acquiring fruit and replanting them, and they're almost fully grown now. I think they're a day either today or another day away from being fully back. To, back. Yeah. Um, but like now I do myself like I, I'm like experimenting with stuff now. Like I know like don't be juiced up on the goddamn fruit. Never yep. be juiced. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to break all your rocks. <laughs> yeah, no. So don't never be juiced. Um, but I like, I did like a small little experiment, like a section of trees. I hit twice with an ax, but left them. I was like, all right, I'm going to come back tomorrow and see if I can hit them again twice or if one more time they fall. Next day, hit them twice. They were good to go. 
You can do the flimsy axe or the stone axe if you're just seeking seeking wood. You can hit them three times, get your max wood without damaging the tree. Oh, you see that? It's a little caveat. So I'm like learning. I ended up doing that because the flimsy axes were never a thing in the old games. Just these are new yeah. for this one. But there was a day where I needed wood and i ran around with the regular axe oh dude like, you need so much wood yeah. for those items i was like oh fuck i just i did the exact i chopped out like everything in the front part of my island i was like ah shit um and realized after a day they weren't growing back like, all right all right so then i was like well the flimsy axe doesn't how much is to craft that so it was like five wood and a stone or something so yeah, i just man. did that ran around it's and like got twigs. all the wigs it's twigs yeah, yeah 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 um it, it's, yeah, I didn't know about the stone axe thing. That's good to know. Because yeah. I feel like the stone axe, like, I feel like the regular, the flimsy axe, I hit, like, two trees and I'm like, all right, it's done. Yeah. No, but you can bump up the other one pretty quickly. Um, I did that and ran around and, and got all the wood I needed. Like, I just basically, there was one day where I was like, I'm getting wood and I'm putting it away. Because they stack in stacks of 30. So I just went around to every tree on the island hitting each one and then took all of it and put it in my storage in my house. And I'm, like, trying to, like, learn all this stuff on my own, too. Like, if I, – I, I have texted you about various things, but it's, like, either, one, I can't experiment myself and I just want to yeah. know, or, yeah. two, like, I've – don't – I just don't know. I don't even know how to go about, like, finding out. Yeah, there's there's a couple of those things, and it's – I think that, again, like, the Twitter sharing has been really cool for that, seeing what people say and what they recommend. Um, and I think that's the cool thing, too, is, like, even sitting side by side, like – Katie and I will be playing, and she'll show me something she did. How the fuck did you do that? You know what I mean? It's, there's, like, just a sense of discovery throughout the whole. So, and, like, before, I always saw, like, getting 2,000 miles was, like, a lot. So, I was, like, very cautious about going out on the Nook Island thing. Yeah, before yeah. I realized they're, like, completely random. There's no chance you ever go back to it again. So, like, oh, fuck, I was mining for all of this. But before I knew that, that's why I was asking for the ore and things like that. Right, right, right. So, but now that I know about that. My, this weird and I, it's just it's me i don't know why i'm fucking hard-headed and that's dark souls thing is coming out of me where i just want to like beat and i put beat like yeah, in yeah, air yeah. quotes the biggest air quotes ever by myself so my no, thing my thing now is like whenever victoria comes over she's like you want anything I'm, nope i got a self-sufficient island it's all renewable resources here baby <laughs> it's the i forgot completely like the whole weird meta about the last game and the islands because the last game it wasn't a plane but you would take a boat down yeah, to whatever, an island yeah, whatever and the neat thing about that is that those islands it was always summer whenever you went there so you could be playing in the dead of winter but you could go there and that's where you get shark and you get summer beetles and i completely forgot until the tarantula island stuff started this week where you there was a fucking thing where you'd go through you'd want to chop down all the trees on the island but one the island was a little bit smaller than what you're mm-hmm. playing on this one you chop down all but one because it would force a spawn on that um i forget if the what, what the other rules were but something like that and basically it would just mean that the, you'd walk off screen and back on screen and there'd be a new bug there um or there'd be a bug there if there wasn't yeah. one before and it was just a matter of making sure it was the right type of beetle that would yield you the most bells. And then you'd keep an eye out in the corners as you're running back and forth for the shark fins sticking out of the water. You'd spend the night just running back and forth there. And you could make, like, a good couple hundred grand, like, easily. You figure yeah. if you could hold, like, I think, like, 25 items or something or 30, you get 30 fucking beetles that are worth 10 grand, like... Yeah, like, I, I, you know, I finally got the ladder, so I'm, like, finally exploring, like, all the parts of the of my island and stuff. And then, like, I'm looking at the Critopedia. I'm like, what? Why? How the fuck am I going to get, like, all 80 of these things when I got, like, 12? In a year. And then, like, I last night, I'm, like, on IGN just, like, browsing through news or whatever. And I, there was a guide. No wonder stupid fucking guides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That have no business being on their timeline. But whatever. That's Did another. Click on it. Did you click on it? Yeah, no, I didn't. I just saw the headline and moved on. Oh. But the headline was the bugs and oh, fish oh, oh. that were leaving in March. And I'm like, duh, this game is seasoned. That's why and it's going to apply to everything. And then, yeah. So. That's why it's in the timeline, Matt. Didn't fucking click on it, though. Didn't fucking click on it. Moved on. But it gave you the information you needed. Yeah, exactly. Headline Sorry. reading. Uh, well, I'm super happy that you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, no, I, I am honestly shocked. I knew that you could, and I hoped that you would. But I'm surprised that you're enjoying it that much, because it's that. It's no, like I make a, it. I make it a point to log in for at least at least log in, get my bonus miles. I'm pissed about that because since Nooks was closed yesterday because oh. it was remodeling, I think it's gonna reset my. 
Oh, I want. Uh, I'm gonna good, check. Good okay. coding would. Yeah. We'll find out. Someone, someone that was smart in the coding as- aspect of it should realize that. We'll see. I did play some more Switch stuff this week. Mm-hmm. So the last couple weeks uh, before Animal Crossing hit, I would do that thing where I'd kind of like look through my whole library of Switch games and be like, hey, what am I playing? And I kept seeing one that I was like, I should go back to that at some point. And then you do the mental game where you kind of like play through it in your head and you're like, yeah, I know what it is. It's no big deal. And then there was a Nintendo Direct this week that announced a new ARMS character was coming to Switch, or uh, to Smash, and I was like, let me jump back, let me just do a little yes, bit. Yes, 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 yes. Because I really had, I've been like... That makes sense, that's how you knew it was, yeah, all right, it's, everything makes sense now. Yeah. I, I was like, kind of, again, like I was like, I'm itching to play ARMS again, I hope there's a seat, you know what I mean, I was like thinking all those things the last couple of weeks, and then they announced there was going to be a new party crash, which is kind of like their Splatfest kind of thing. Um... And I was like, that's weird. There hasn't been one in such a, like, okay. And then they announced a free trial for, like, this week into next. If no one's played it, you just download the whole game and play it for free. And I was like, oh, weird. Buzz around arms again. I was like, I wonder if they're ramping up to announce a sequel or announce something. Or who knows, whatever. Uh, of course, now we know it's the, the character. But I played, so I haven't played probably, like, seriously. You know what I mean? Like, I've maybe turned it on and tried it here or there. But actually played ARMS in, probably since the launch summer, maybe. So, like, three years. And back then, I remember the development team and producers, like, going on tour with it and saying, like, motion controls are the way to play this game. Like, here are button controls, but you really get a, a better feel for it if you use motion. Yeah, and the button controls, they were wonky. Like, some of it was face, some of it was, like, shoulder. Yeah. Like it, didn't, it wasn't, like... It didn't feel it's, good. Yeah, I think you can use now. You can use both. Like you can use, you can use A B for right punch, left punch, and then X is jump and Y is dash. But you can also do X and Y is dash, and then the L and R are left and right. You can. Yeah, I couldn't. I don't remember what the control. I just remember like playing it for that first time on the control, and it's, it doesn't feel great. It's weird. Yeah. Um. So I tried it this time, like fresh start with new character. I tried out. Um, Min Min, that was the one Katie always played as back when we would play. Um, I was more of a Ribbon Girl player. I, I know who Mi- Ribbon Girl is. Um, so I was playing as Min Min and using motion controls, and they are so fucking good. I, I didn't think that like I would actually... Because I feel like I would always over-act or over-pantomime like pantomime the, the motions that you're supposed to do for it. But you know now that I kind of like get what you're supposed to do, like being able to like duck blood... Yeah, duck, block, dodge, and, and all of those things. Um, doing that with motion and being able to, like, throw a punch and then twist it at the very end. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't get that precision with just a no, no. joystick. You, like, you really have that control in this. And it it feels really fun to play. And I, I don't know what the Smash announcement means. Like, does this mean they're trying to build hype for an ARMS 2? Or does this mean that they're putting the character in Smash and to get people excited about the Smash character, they're building hype for the original game again? Look, I don't know what's the chicken, what's the egg 50 50. I mean, well, I think we'll talk more about this come to when we talk about the Direct, but I yeah. think it's a little 50 50. Yeah, I don't know. But either way, I'm having fun with it right now, and it's free to play for at least a week. So if you want to try it. I'm sorry, I, I was laughing when you were saying that. Uh, I'm on armswiki.org to Uh-oh. look at the, the characters. And when I click the min min, if you go down the right, uh, underneath basic information, there is official stats. And one of the official stats is arm girth. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did not know that that's uh, okay. It's, uh, I don't know. What's love of ramen? Huh? Love of ramen? Is that a thing? Ramen a thing? I mean, Maybe. Yeah. Uh, her, so the... Min Min's arms are made out of noodles. Let me see and if all of them have it. her stage is in a giant ramen bowl. Hmm. Hold on, hold on. Now i got to experiment. Sorry. Diving deep in the arms wiki. Yeah, that's real weird. Yep, here we go. Arms Institute. Arms, armswiki.org. Yeah, there's like a whole like comic book. Like, There's a deep lore to this I'm game. I'm not shocked. Nothing shocks me anymore. Oh, that's right. I was always the Jelly Man. He, yeah, that's right. He looks, yeah. I, was, yeah. I was trying to f- remember who I always was. All right, here we go. Who's Lola Pop? 
She was DLC. Uh, it's just sweetness. Or, yeah, it changed yeah. the last one. But arm girth is a, the second a, stat after size. There you go. S- size, arm girth, speed, jumping, inflatability. Oh, boy. Inflatability on all of them now. No, kicking. I think it's their super or whatever. Oh, their, okay. Yeah, okay. their alternate attack or whatever. Interesting. But, yeah. Well, the last arm thing girth. I played. Yeah, arm, arm girth. <laughs> I played uh, Ring Fit Adventure, as I have been. I've closed my rings or my Apple Watch, Matt, every day consecutively since March 9th, which I was like, I told you I had fallen off after Christmas around that time where it was kind of like, I'm kind of doing whatever, but like all March for the most part, I have been closing my rings because of ring fit. Um, And then obviously with current quarantine status, it's, you know. Yeah, prize item. Not that I was ever like out and about anyway, but it's been nice like to feel a little active when i'm not like leaving the house and getting in a car and driving to work I don't, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. not, not that i'm ever like super super active anyway but um that's been cool and thankfully this week is also part of the nintendo direct but we'll talk about later on in the news but there was a new update to ring fit adventure and one that i've been fucking asking for forever and mentally in my head and to no one else but uh a big one that's cool, it, there's the new edition of jogging, which you can now choose a stage or in the custom uh, game modes, you can kind of choose like four stages or whatever, or however many you want, and then just string them together one after the other. You can just run through them, um, and you can choose to do that. Uh, well, it, it's basically, you still like, if there's any like jumping you have to do or any of those things, that stuff's still in there, but it just removes all the enemies from it, so you don't have to worry about stopping to do combat. Mm-hmm. Because that is definitely the thing where, like, I feel like I will start to, like, jog in place. And I'm like, oh, I feel pretty good. Like, I feel – and then it's like, ah, okay, I got to stop. I got to – now I got to do these leg works. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. It, it throws things off. So when the update hit, usually my ring fit sessions are turn it on, jump in, go to adventure mode, and just go um, until – I try and do, like, at least 30 minutes. Or I, I have, like, a calorie goal. Like, I try and burn at least 200 calories and then anything more than that, good to go. Um, and I've been like doubling that 200 calorie calorie goal each time I jump in now, just because of the update, I'm like doing a couple levels in adventure mode and now they've added the jogging. So I might do a little bit of jogging and I'm doing the new rhythm mode update where they added, it's so dumb, but I saw a gameplay of it. Yeah. Yeah. I I saw your, your tweet as well. Yeah. It's like, so the tweet I put out was the like advanced it's Mm -hmm. when you start out, you have like easy, medium and hard basically. As soon as you beat advanced, you get super advanced. And when you beat super advanced, you get ultra advanced. So I haven't – you need to get like an A rank or higher. I can't get A rank on super advanced. Not because of me though. That's the one thing. I got to try it with a different Joy-Con. But one of my Joy-Con that I've been using, uh... and it's the newer one, the orange one, it like when you're tilting – because basically, sorry, the rhythm mode in Ring Fit, you have the ring in your hand. There's rings on the screen flying at you like – a rhythm game does like a fretboard yeah and yeah think think maybe like a fret <laughs> and you have to it's either middle left or right and it's either stand still and just kind of hit the ring or squeeze or pull or squeeze and hold or pull and hold you know those types of things um, but there have been times where i'm like moving and it's not registering the move mm. and i've had that a couple times with any of the like twisting um like exercises like that kind of spin move it sometimes like doesn't pick up on the fact that I've swung away. You know what I mean? And it's just because I think there's like a weird, like it's that member that like yeah, Bluetooth yeah. weirdness that happened, but it's the newer joy cons. I don't know why that one's, I don't know. but, um, that one's fun. They added, uh, what Mario Odyssey songs, breath of the wild, a tune from there. Splatoon, Splatoon two medley. They did like two songs in one, a we fit medley, which, did that one that was nice little pour one out for the homies, you know what I mean? Um when are they gonna get the Wii Shop medley in there? Oh my god. If they put that <laughs> I do I hope that they end up adding like a fuck ton more songs to it. I, I would love if Ring Fit could be a platform. Um I think I mentioned it I think they already turn it into one. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that the uh I said it around game of the year time, I think, but if they did like paid DLC for this for like more adventure, but I think this also like there's like a new game plus where once you beat the main story, you just keep going supposedly. So I don't know. 
They also added the option to change your ring's gender and voice uh, language. Voice gender and voice language. So, I made mine a uh, Japanese lady, which is fun because I have no idea what she's saying. But I hated the, the little ring, the default voice. He just like, it's like a whiny little pissant kind of whatever. Like, it's been the one thing that's like embarrassing about playing this is like, I if, if he's like cheering you on or something, someone's upset, not someone, but Katie, you know what I mean? Just like. Yep, got it. All right, cool. It just sucks. But now it's just like, I don't know what she's saying. It sounds like I'm walking through Tokyo again, so this is fun. Um, <laughs> or jogging, in this case. The jo- yeah, I mean, that that's the cool thing. And now it's like, I'm learning a little Japanese, though. Because I already, I've got his dumb voice and brain and ingrained in my brain so much from, like, doing the spins where he'd be like, left, right, left, right, left, right. And now I'm, like, slowly learning how to say that stuff in Japanese. Ring Fit Adventure, if you can find it, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, if, I, I think it's the I big thing is, right now. Yeah, I know it is very sold out. Um, I think that's everything I played outside of dicking around, you know, here and there with other things. But um, I didn't spend a ton of time, but I did try out the Switch Lite a little bit now that there's one in the house mm-hmm. just to see. So I jumped into the uh, Switch, the NES and I just fired up Mario 1. Just like, what does it feel like with this D-pad? What does it feel like on this thing? Man, Switch Lite's got good squishy buttons on the... Oh, Man, it feels real good. It feels like a, a new Vita. Like, I highly considered, after playing hers, like, all right, maybe I just leave that one in the dock, go buy a Switch Lite for myself. It's so like, dumb. Man, I know. I know, but I really... It, dude, it's like a fucking Vita. Um, well, I mean, the other day, though, or, yeah, the other day, like... Victoria was like sitting in, well, I'm playing Warzone. She's in my bed. I'm like, I can tell you to dock it, but sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the one trade off. Because we were, when Katie was looking at him, she's like, do I need that? And I was like, she really wanted the Switch Lite. And I was like, you can't plug in a TV ever. She was like, ah, it's fine. I was like, all right, why don't you play Animal Crossing on mine for like an hour in your hands and just see what that feels like? And she's like, yep, buying the Switch Lite. So I think it's cool though. It, it worked out. Speaking of working out, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got some news and a hot topic of the week right after this. Welcome back to the part where we talk about the news. We got some items outside of the Nintendo Direct to talk about. And then, of course, the Nintendo Direct. Uh, number one, Matt. Dark Horse Comics announced a new God of War comic miniseries called God of War Fallen God. On sale June 24th, 2020 at your local comic shop or available digitally. Uh, And this is going to bridge the gap between God of War 3 and the 2018 God of War. Will you read it? It's a four-part miniseries? No. I'll just get the recap. (laughs) Do you think that this is going to lead into a new game announcement? I I mean, it has to. I mean, there's going to be a sequel to that game. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, one, the end of that game sets up for it. Two, financially and uh critically successful there's just there's just no way and cory barlog on on twitter uh has dropped numerous hints and subtleties suggesting that there's going to be a new god of war game right uh i i don't know this leads up to an announcement but i mean it just it just goes to show that uh god of war has so much kind of power behind it that it branched other mediums I feel like there were God of War comics. Probably. I'm there were. Shocked. There definitely were. They were, um, fuck, who was that public? IEW published them. I, th- or... I don't remember. Yeah, I remember I'm not the... shocked. I mean, they had the, uh, the PSP games that filled in some lore. I'm sure there's other little things they can fill in. I think it's cool that they're bridging the gap between three and four, because that's like, you play three, you end three, but beating the shit out of Zeus, and then all of a sudden you're married <laughs> in four, yeah. like, or what, or were married, I should say, uh, with a kid. Wild Storm. Ah, okay. I knew I could feel the feeling of the the cover. They did these, they printed it on really weird. Uh, I don't know. IDW used to use that paper, and Wildstorm did also. 
Yeah, so, ah, that's cool. Yeah, not bad. Um, number two, Epic Games has signed a publishing deal with Remedy, Playdead, and Gen Design, offering developers 100% of their intellectual property ownership, full creative control over the project, 100% of dev costs, including testing, patches, etc., um, all being funded by Epic, and 50-50 profit sharing once costs have been recouped. Uh, Remedy, of course, behind the recent control play dead you know from limbo and inside and gen design is the studio headed by fumitu oeda behind shadow of the colossus the last guardian this is pretty big yeah it's a big move it's it's definitely uh tim sweeney said that this is the deal that they always wish they had when they had been working with publishers in the past so being able to do it is a, a big big deal for epic uh, do you think we would we will see other publishers moving aggressively like this to kind of counter it? Do you feel like we'll start to see more deals like this? Uh, I forgot. Did Steam budge on their revenue mm-hmm. split? Then maybe not. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the thing. It's like Epic did that. I, I think that I still feel or like the, the game store did the, re- the revenue split. Was right. it 50 or uh, no, 90-10. Okay. Ten percent goes yeah. to Epic, ninety goes to the dev. Um Do you think there's any studios out there who I mean obviously any studio would benefit from a deal like this, but do you think there's a studio in specific that would like maybe needs this or Ooh, needs? Ooh. Who oh, man. Ooh. Who put something mediocre out? Recently? Well, I, <laughs> I think of even something like Platinum, where Platinum was in a position where they made um but Bayonetta, they made Vanquish, they made all these things that aren't theirs, right? Like even yeah. Astral Chain they made with Nintendo. It's only on Nintendo platforms because Nintendo published it. But, it, you know what I mean? Like, Nintendo, it's their IP now, not Platinum's. And we're seeing that change where Platinum gets itself into a space where it's self-publishing. But something like this could have helped a company like them. Um, I wouldn't be shocked. Was it Quantic Dream, David Cage's? I wouldn't because uh, they've have a relationship with Epic Games, but yeah. putting their games on PC out there on their on their store platform. So I wouldn't be shocked if that's like the next developer you see to go there. Can't think of a team that like it's in a good position to to need this. Well, uh, maybe not a good position, but I don't, I don't know. I can't think of an independent developer right now. Not off the top of my head. I, I'll say that like I think in this case, right? Like with Remedy, Play Dead, and Gen Design. All of them, all of those studios, all those developers definitely have the type of games where they are very creator controlled, right? Like, oh, yeah. That you think about that, like, Remedy wants to build its own universe. Play Dead has had that very, like, present self of uh, sense of self identity, like, placed in the game. So you kind of know their feel and their what their games are. And then Ueda stuff is, right? Like, I don't even call it gen design, I call it Ueda stuff, right? Like, yeah. that tells you what you need to know there. Yeah, and in pl- the thing with Playdead and Remedy, like, they have a past relationship with Epic Games. Like, Control came out exclusively mm-hmm. on the Epic Games Store. Mm-hmm. Um, Playdead stuff trickled out on the Epic Games Store. I don't, I don't think it's on Steam. Is mm. it on Steam? It may have released initially on Steam. Now I'm thinking about it. Well, it didn't. Inside it came out on Xbox first, right? Mm. I don't remember at this point. No, because I played Inside. Inside's on Steam. I played Inside on. Um, PS4 first, mm-hmm. like that opening, whatever. I think, um, the, what was the other one? Limbo. I think Limbo launched as like an Xbox oh. uh, thing. I forget what they're called. Exclusive. It was like, Time's no, time. it was back when they did like a Time exclusive. summer of gaming or some shit like that. Oh, uh, one of those. All right, well. Yeah, I mean, but still play that stuff's on the Epic Game Store. Uh, I don't think. Gen design stuff is there because isn't that Sony IP? So far, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's that's another reason, right? Like it's it's Sony stuff, even though he made it. Speaking of Sony stuff, we learned this week that Warframe is coming to the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X at some point. Yeah, I think that was pretty pretty obvious. Yeah, and a good thing to have. But it's cool because there are a lot of these free-to-play games that have lasted and permeated throughout this generation that have obviously evolved in these living service games. And it has been... Sorry, not to be confused with Sega. Um, but these service games that we look at as 
they started here, how are they going to grow? How are they going to benefit from the next gen? I look at something like DC Universe Online that started as like a mid-gen PS3 game that is still, you know, just released on Switch last year. Um, but that one's looking pretty rough. So are they going to bring it to PS5? Are they going to do a sequel on PS5 instead? Or what does that look like? It sounds like Warframe, they're working on it. I saw uh, they do pretty regular dev streams and community streams, and they showed off the game running on DirectX 12, and it looked pretty rough. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, But they're really transparent about it, which is cool. Um, speaking of transparency, Sony has stated that the current situation may cut into profit overall, but the PlayStation 5 release date should not be impacted. How do you feel about that one? Uh, I think it's, you know, anything can can happen. I mean, we've seen Sony delay projects and stuff like that before, but I think it's good that someone kind of came. Well, there was rumors, right? The GameStop CEO kind of started that that um, that banter about, you know, he's seen nothing that these consoles are going to get delayed. And then the actually have a spokesperson from Sony, not just do the well, we don't comp, we don't speculate in a rumor, blah 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 blah. They actually came out and said. Uh, this isn't impacting anything so far. So yeah. I, I think the good thing is, uh, you know, and the scenario can change. And this is all changing day to day, obviously. But, like, China, for the most part, seems to be kind of up and running. Yeah. So a lot of the – I'm sure the, a lot of the manufacturing plants are coming from China, um, if not all of them probably. So um, that that's, that's going to be good. Uh, I know there's some analysts out there that are saying that scarcity might be an issue or yeah. whatever, but like, isn't that what we always say at this time? And yeah. I remember three years ago with the Switch, you panicking because you didn't, didn't order on Amazon yeah. the first day or whatever. Um, and that turned out in my favor because all the people who ordered on Amazon didn't get it until Monday. Yeah, yeah. And, no, and it, it, it's weird. I've been thinking about what to do on that day. What do, what do I do? Yeah, I think we might have to go find Danny and Scott again. Yeah, that's what I'm, I, I've been thinking. We can bundle up. Yep. Bring her switches. Yep. Look for Danny and Scott. Danny and Scott been playing Animal Crossing. I've seen that. Long-time listeners or new-time listeners might not know Danny and Scott, but Danny and Scott, two folks we met in line for the Switch, swapped Miitomo well, friend codes. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. During the Switch three-year. Swapped Miitomo friend codes, and that was it. The rest yeah. is history. Yeah. History being made as uh, Summer Games Done Quick delayed... Normally, I think SGDQ starts uh, early to, it's like late to early, I'm sorry, late June to early July, uh, delayed August 16th to the 23rd. However, from April 17th to 19th, uh, a Corona Relief Done Quick Marathon will run uh, for those days, all profits going to Corona Relief Funds. Makes sense. Sakurai, I'm sorry, Masahiro Sakurai of. of oh, I was going to say some of it. I thought what was interesting is they're going to have you resubmit yes. your your speed run. Yes, thank so, you. So, Bone Saw. Get it, get it, get Fingers it. It's crossed. Um, Let them in. Yeah, they're resetting all the, the lineups they currently had so that people can uh, resubmit. There's a new timeline, a new time frame for that. If you go to gamesdonequick.com, you can read Did they release the game schedule or the games or anything like that? I don't remember. Because I, I mean, I'd be curious if they have released it and then if they change it based off new games that would come out at this point. Because I think you would see it. Yeah. There almost, there almost has to be a Doom Eternal speed run, right? If they can submit now, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like and like other stuff. Like who knows by the time they are able to submit again? Because Final Fantasy VII is right around the corner. You got Resident Evil Three about to come out as well. Yeah. Like all this stuff. Hey, speaking of Doom speed runs. There was one of the cool things of the speed run from 2016 oh, okay, okay. was Glory Kills. Uh, it was something you had to do at a super high frame rate, but if you were right next to a door, did you ever see this? Mm-hmm. You would do a Glory Kill and you could warp yourself through the door whether or not it was locked or unlocked. And I did that last night by accident, <laughs> uh, except it wasn't cool. I oh, got no. – it was a uh, Cacodemon flying in the sky. I hit him with a rocket. It was – I don't know the level, but it was like after your, uh, I don't want to say too much, but you go somewhere to a planet. Okay. All right. When you fucking go to Mars. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, but I'm running and I shoot him and I glory kill. It warps to him and then I fall through the environment and I'm behind a wall that you can climb and I can see like the 
hand groove textures, but it's all still transparent. I just see the little like black lines across the screen. And then I'm just standing on rocks. I can't jump up. I can't get out. I had to reload the checkpoint and go from there. But neat that that still kind of does. I guess the glory kill instance like pulls you into a momentary cutscene that you can then glitch or what. So do me channel speed runs. I mean, it definitely does because like especially when you get that power up that lets you warp across the map. Like there's got to yeah. be something there. Yeah. Uh, Masahiro Sakurai has a weekly Famitsu column, and in the six hundredth of those columns. Um, it speaks a little bit about the effects of the current quarantine situation on Super Smash Brothers development. Uh, this comes from sourcegaming.info, and the gist of it is that right now they're still kind of working because they're able to go to the office, but... Um, they're very careful. He can't go on any business trips. Um, he said that they've been recommended to work from home. Um, the problem is that ordinary business, or or he says that work from home for many people is fine because whatever, but they have a lot of confidential, right? Like the the stuff they're working on is obviously Unless you're Ubisoft. Right. Yeah. Just (laughs) get on an airplane. (laughs) Fucking make it. Um, so... It's kind of like we can't really afford moving development equipment, so you can't really work from home. And with children at home, you would need to take breaks to keep an eye on the kids. It's like all of those things that would affect it. He said that his business trips have been affected, so things where he would go to Nintendo and Kyoto. Just little things like that, but also trips to other companies, planning new fighters, presenting to publishers. All of those things, all those meetings have been indefinitely postponed. Um, yeah, because... <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but is Smash still developed by Konami? It's or partnered. Wasn't one of the Smash games? Uh, Bandai Namco. Ban- oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yes. I. He's. I think specifically talking about his game studio, Sora Limited. Okay. I don't know if he's also talking. I don't know if that works. If they work like directly in the same buildings with. And I, I don't. I don't know. But it'd be one thing. I'm sure like Nintendo has different offices, of course, like, like most companies. But like, you know, one thing they have it all in house in Nintendo. But like, when you have a co-publisher or co-developer or something like that, and their studio is across the country or you know or in a different office, then yes, it does get. You have to travel. Yeah. So he, you know, the fact that he even can't just go to Kyoto from, I assume he's in Tokyo. I mean, I we, you look at all the horror games, or not? Sorry. Look at all the horror disasters yeah. of video games, and a lot of them come from poor communication between the offices. Yeah, uh, I feel like the that YouTube series, uh, what happened? Like yeah. every fucking episode, it's like someone didn't communicate with someone, or yeah, yep. <laughs> Usually, it's that. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's in Tokyo, so he can't get from Tokyo to Kyoto. Which, as a Japanese expert, um, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, no, if you take the bullet train, though, like, that was only a hour and a half bullet train? No, I don't remember. Oh, you actually judged times? I thought you did it by Mario Kart races. <laughs> you get through four cups, right? Okay, four cups worth, okay. So it's not that long of a, a Shinkansen <laughs> ride, but, um, yeah. So he goes on, I, I, you know, you can read the whole thing at sourcegaming.info, but basically... They're still working, keeping the building clean. If they are in a situation where they have to not go to the office, um, he said that it will definitely impact the release of Smash characters. Um, but I, I'm sure this is not – he's not – he's saying it, but he's this is not the only company developed. No, I, I think that this just kind of indicates kind of what we're expecting or what we should expect for Q3, Q4, and even into like Q1 of next year. Yeah. Like, whatever was planned. What was it? It was Schreier that was like, yeah, I think the April games are fine, but anything past April, I would not yeah. expect to be on time. Yeah. Because how can you? And that's huge. Like, like Cyberpunk, kind of, they can they can deal with another delay or whatever, right? But, like, if you were supposed to be a launch title internally for PS5, say, say Horizon 2 is the launch title. Yeah. And you need to hit the launch window, like... Yeah, how do like you... what do you do? Do you delay it? Do you like risk that? Do you delay the whole con? Like what? What do you do? Yeah, what, I don't know what that looks like. It's a weird thing. The um, I know that I don't know if we talked about it on air or not, but we probably I don't know the 
interview I read with Moon Studios behind Ori and how that whole company is remote just by nature, mm-hmm. the way they set up the company. So I think there's a, you know, I think that this whole situation is teaching people new ways to work and teaching people new ways to do things. And, and that's cool. And I think maybe on the other side of it, you get pretty creative you know what i mean like i think people are finding they can do their jobs remotely and they can do different things remotely in a way so maybe but like sakurai said it would take so much for them to get all of their development stuff up and running from a home office so it's just it'd be a different different move yeah no, no. our last story before the nintendo direct recap comes from konami who has officially responded to the recent silent hill rumors we've talked about a little bit Um, of them on here. We haven't talked about every single rumor that popped up because there were some crazy ones, but a representative, uh, North American PR Konami rep says, um, the recent Silent Hill rumors are not true. Quote, we're aware of all the rumors and reports, but can confirm that they are not true. I know it's not the answer your fans may want to hear, said a Konami North American PR representative to rely on horror.com. Uh, quote, it's not to say we're completely closing the door on the franchise, just not in the way it is being reported. So I don't know if this is just like the Kojima stuff. I don't know if this is whatever, but you also had the guy from Koji Pro making all those very specific teases about Pyramid Head. You know what I mean? Like all that yeah. stuff was... I think it's just red herring, just to throw you off the scent. Yeah, that... I think also like the more the most recent thing that was brought up on that Rely on Horror website was a report that Sony was looking to buy all of Konami's IP. I think yeah, that, like that that's that seems outlandish. I mean, there's always those rumors of like, oh, well, Microsoft's thinking about buying EA or it, like that stuff services and never comes true. I I don't know. It's I I do think they're doing some of the IP and I, at this point I do think Kojima is in, it involved, but uh I, I just don't know yeah, in what capacity and and like and like you said, we've seen this in the industry before. We're just, I'm not going to be at E3, and then here comes fucking David Jaffe out in an ice cream truck. Yep. So. The old Jaffe ice cream truck. All right, yeah, man. What's going to happen to that Twisted Metal launch game that I predicted? Oh, <laughs> I really hope that is a thing. We need one. Just like we needed a Nintendo Direct this week, I want to thank you, Matt, for uh, waiting and watching it live with me. A little live texting back and forth. Um, so this was a, a hell of a surprise. Normally we get some sort of warning, got nothing. 10 a.m. It said, yo, here's a direct go. I was throwing off because, uh, that it dropped so fast and they were still kind of promoting on Twitter, like their indie world stuff. So I was like, oh, it was another one of these. And then like, when you guys were texting back and forth. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is a real ass a direct. And direct. It's a mini direct. because they don't have like a fucking bookend. Like they usually, yeah, yeah. They usually have like, oh, uh, we're going to take a deep dive into Animal Crossing or, or whatever the, the, yeah. the flavor of the week is. That's um, what even had me more excited about this. Huh? That's what had me even more excited about this. Kind of go into it. Yeah, a lot of, lot of bullet points. We'll run through what uh, Nintendo has called featured and then uh, the highlights from it. So Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition gets a release date of May 29th. Still don't know how I feel about this one. Uh, I, eh. I mean, sure. I, it's just not my cup of tea. I had nothing bad to say about it. Uh, there is it, well, um, more on that on the news though. Like, isn't there DLC or something with it? Or what was that? What was the gold font about? Uh, well, I was kind of like half listening. Yeah, no. It. <sighs> Sorry for those Xenoblade you know, Blade Chronicle fans out there. No, there was a. But you never know. I shouldn't on Animal Crossing a long time ago, so. Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. Uh, I think it's just like new. Con- I don't know if it's brand new content for this or or not. I can't remember now. Um, yeah, not, there's nothing really there. But it's all, you know, remastered from the Wii game. Uh, I think maybe they added stuff with the 3DS game and they're adding that all here. Um, that's out May 29th. 2K has announced. Oh, and just. Uh, more on the on the on that news though, but like they Nintendo is very direct, no pun intended, up front about saying that these release dates are well, yeah, yeah, could yeah, change yeah. because of what's going on in the world. So that's true. As of right now, it's May whatever. I'm sorry, twenty ninth, twenty ninth. Yeah. But um, they were very upfront in the first ten seconds of that direct saying that these dates may not hold. Yeah. 
Uh, Bioshock the Collection, Borderlands Legendary Collection, and XCOM 2 coming to Switch. Three bangers. Well, no, that's good. I think across the board, they're all, that's all. It's a good win for the Switch. I mean, Bioshock makes sense. I mean, I was texting you, like, Bioshock was on an iPhone at one point, so uh, they can do it. Um, I think Borderlands makes perfect sense. And it does. When two came to Vita, that was a really cool thing. Yeah, and then like I don't think the Switch really has like a loot shooter like that. You got Diablo, but not in the shooter way. Yeah, right? like you do have the loot. Like like, yeah, so I think like that fills that like that not it's not a niche audience by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely fills that genre that yeah. is probably a lack on the Switch. And then XCOM is kind of at home on, on on the Switch. I like that yeah. like to go aspect. Turn I, off and I on. think I might get because I never played two, so I might grab that. Yeah, here. I never played two either. I heard the thing about two. I heard was just stay away from DLCs. I heard they make the game incredibly difficult. Huh, interesting. You, I will look more into that, but yeah, uh, XCOM two. Bravely default two, out. Uh, wait, did they give a release date for this? Sorry. I think, it, I think they said summer. Either way, there's a demo out on the eShop right now. Available 2020 oh, okay. on the Still. Nintendo website. But you can download the demo. Oh, that's what it is. Download the demo, and then you can give feedback um, based on what you play uh, to help kind of shape the game for the future. Downloaded the demo, started the demo, went, oh, right. And then I kind of stopped. And never... I don't know. I've, I'm really happy with the first games... ones. Like well received yeah and i think this one will be too for sure i just don't think they're for me nope this one game of the show here (laughs) tabletop classics from around the world games of the show games of the show uh clubhouse games 51 worldwide classics matt you got backgammon you got billiards you got hanafuda you got so many games all across the board, promising the pro or I'm sorry, uh, finally, what am, I, what am I looking for? Delivering the promise of the Wii U tech demo way back when, when they were playing Go on the Wii U gamepad. Now we get to play it this summer on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, instead of using Adobe After Effects to fool you into thinking it was running on the Wii U, now it's actually going to be able to run on a thing that's not a Fisher Price toy. That's true. It's true. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass. Uh, I showed a little bit more off of that game. I think at that point I was kind of like, yep, got it, got it, got it. Um, so I don't really... Yeah, you meanwhile text. Oh, just one more thing. Just one more. I yeah, thought maybe they, there would be, no. you know? Ah. No. Um, but that's out still targeting June for that first half of the pass and then the other half uh, winter. Oh, weird. That's so weird. When you click on these links, like it usually takes you to another page in Nintendo. Nope, not Pokemon. It takes you to the whole Pokemon. site. Com. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. Um, the headlines, we had the, uh, they teased the Bunny Day coming up in Animal Crossing New Horizons, which Bunny Day's fine. I'll, I'll collect some rabbit eggs. It's no big deal. I don't really love all the furniture you get out of it. But I like the event idea of it. Yeah, I'm not a big pastel spring color person nope me neither I like my neons yeah I like neons not pastel you, not pastel uh this one looks cool i almost impossibly bought this but it I'm, was ten dollars more five dollars more than my impulse let yeah I, I, uh, still gonna do it probably gonna do I'm it i'm probably gonna do it there's yeah. one other thing i'm gonna get we'll see i mean this might be a payday mm-hmm. purchase depending mm-hmm. on how my funds look after buying the new ipad but uh, Good Job is a new puzzle strategy game that just looks kind of weird. It looks and... like a goose game. Yeah, it's got it, like, similar... It's like playful, yeah. you can kind of go about it however you want, it, it can make you laugh, but there is like a like a thing you need to do about getting a job done. We talked like about... the boss's son or something like that, and you're trying yeah. to make your way up the company. It looked neat. I, I, might, I do want to try that. We talked about the update for Ring Fit Adventure. Um, we... There's... You can now play uh, the Fantastic Four in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order Expansion Pass. Uh, showed off Gung Ho's Ninjala. Uh, Free to play Splatoon ass looking ass. <laughs> Splatoon anime ass looking yeah. ass. I feel like I had seen this before or I imagined it. I don't remember, but it looks cool. Yeah, Splatoon 2 is where you saw it. It's a Battle Royale melee game for up to eight players. Um,. You're running on walls. You're very cartoony. It, it looks like, you know, 
what if Splatoon was something else? It looks I, like like you know in a totally different type of play style and, and paint, but it looks like something like what For Honor for Ubisoft was going for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would definitely try that, especially yeah, free, free to, to play. play. Yeah, and so far in May twenty twenty. Yes, Catherine Fullbody coming to Nintendo Switch. This summer, I think it's July. I think this is where I finally buy. Well, I had it for plus, but I think this is where I buy and finally complete this game. Uh, yeah. Uh, I always like the Catherine game. Or yeah, Catherine the idea. Game. Yeah, I, I like I like the Catherine a lot. I just it was like a it was one of those things where like once you fall off that game, there's no getting yeah, back to gotta... uh, to where you were in that puzzle. So you have to start all over. Uh, King's Bounty 2 coming to Nintendo Switch. Some Civ-ass looking Age of Empires thing. Yeah, I think that that, you know, could do well enough. Um, it looks, I mean, it looks like, it looks like one of those, you know? Yeah. Civ-ass Age of it's Empires. Classic ass. tactical RPG. Uh, Shinsekai Into the Depths. That was the, uh, so this is the second of... Apple Arcade exclusive games that are now reaching other platforms. Exit the Gungeon was shown off a week ago in that indie world. And uh, now this guy from Capcom uh, out on Switch now with more content. And that content was then dumped back into the Apple Arcade version as well. Uh, what do we got here? Panzer Dragoon Remake and Jedi Knight Jedi Academy out now on Nintendo Switch. It's gonna be weird. Uh, I don't think I, I already own Jedi Academy uh, on Steam, but uh, it's gonna be weird to play after uh, Fallen Order. <laughs> oh yeah, it's very arcadey. Even Star Wars Racer, a little, a little surprise I forgot about. Yeah, that's neat. Um, we saw stuff about Slayer. I mean, Panzer Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a quick little montage to show off like a Warhammer 40k game. Uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered coming in 2020, Saints Row 4, Trails of Cold Steel 3, Mr. Driller, Drill Land coming June 25th. Uh, I think it was a Japanese-only GameCube game, if I'm not mistaken. Minecraft Minecraft Dungeons do out this spring still. Uh, so that's looking cool. Oh, there's that rhythm game too, Fuser. Yeah, weird DJ Hero 2 kind of thing. Yeah. And then we got some Super Smash Brothers news um so we learned that the next fighter for super smash brothers is going to be from the arms series of course we talked about arm gro- arm girth earlier in this episode but matt who's gonna be who's it gonna be what from arms yeah eh, the main dude i think they're gonna let you do uh how because uh, twintella and the and the dude play very similarly right no, Twintel has the. She's got braids that she fights with. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. They could do a, a one, two, like an Echo Fighter thing. Yeah, Springman Ribbon Girl kind of thing. Yeah. You got. Uh, I'm surprised your vote didn't go for Helix. Oh, I'm thinking. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Twintel is the. Is the chick Ribbon Girl? Oh yeah, yeah, no, Ribbon Girl is the one you're thinking. Of. Yeah, Twintel is the one she uses. She's got her like. Pigtails that she so Ribbon with. Girl and the Poser Boy, what's yeah, his name? Uh, Spring, Spring Man. Man. Uh, they they play very similarly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think one fighter, and then you can change the costume to male or female. <laughs> Much like, isn't that how Byleth? Yeah. No, that makes logical sense. It's just not what I want. So I'm uh, well, I mean, I don't hesitant. think you're going to get what you want here. I think you're just going to have the Poser Boys of Arms because you're trying to promote Arms That's for. Fair. The inevitable sequel. That's fair. Oh, you think they're okay? Yeah, they're doing all this shit. It's not just for a fire pack, cause no, no, they're doing the sequel. I'd be okay with it. Yeah, see, I'd be very okay with it. They did also put Smash characters in who have not been on a. You know what I mean? You got Joker in Smash. Yeah. Not a not on a Nintendo console. They, I'm just saying, like, logic doesn't always follow these things. And then they talked about the ARMS free game trial um, that you can play. Let me get you an exact date on that one. 
there isn't an exact date listed. Uh, it's like a week. Uh, I think it's at least say June 16, 2017. That doesn't. That doesn't <laughs> I think it at least runs you through this. Um, the current like crash fest they're doing, and that's through April 5th, I think. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, there's your news for the week. There's your surprise Nintendo Direct of the week. I'm oh, excited. 326 to 46. So March Ooh. 26 to April 6th. There it is. Matt, speaking of April 6th, on April 3rd, Resident Evil 3 remake releases. Just a couple days later, Final Fantasy 7 remake releases. Part 1. Part, well, part 1 releases. <laughs> we've talked before about remakes, and we've talked about games like Parasite Eve. What deserve a remake? What games do you think deserve a demake or what would you want to see demake so i'm curious what game would you want to see taken back and to where you want to god could you imagine doom 2016 and like a 8-bit like little side scroll no 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 (laughs) it was more of a joke like oh yeah oh you mean yeah yeah, okay okay, all right a little more like a 32-bit but yeah i get it i get you i get you yeah. Um, huh. All right. D-make. Yeah. D-make. Which platform? Mm-hmm. What kind of era? You know what I mean? And there's people who do these as like little cool art experiments. And they do like, you know, when Death Stranding came out, it was like, what does Death Stranding look like if it was on a PS1? Shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, Can you, uh, are we changing the genre up or just like... And So that was... My follow-up question was, by putting it on a different platform, does that change the game at all? Does it add anything to it? Does it make it play differently? Because uh, I always... I do think of, like... I don't know why this comes to mind. Maybe it's just because of the direct that we just talked about. But, like, Bioshock? Like, I like the idea of that game changing genre to what it was supposed to be on Vita or what it was rumored to be. Oh, man, that would have been cool. Yeah, like that... Um, Little tactical... yeah. Kind of like what Gears is about to do. Yeah. Yeah. And even further to Funko Gears. And put it Talk on which... D-Make. Put things in the Funko. Careful. Careful. Put it on which platform? Oh, I mean, it, it was coming to the Vita, but like... I think oh, it'd be like, yeah. You know, at home on something like that. Yeah. A D-Make. I hate when you throw these questions at me because I never have a good answer for you. Sorry. I always think of it, like, you know, on my way home. I'm like, damn it. If it makes you feel better, I'd thought of the question like hours ago and didn't think of an answer so i don't know I'm trying to like i want some brand new like new ip what if they took this new resident evil 3 remake and then demade it into like a ps1 game with um with um what are those cameras called isometric I, yeah isometric yeah. and yeah. you know um you couldn't control the camera and there were terrible camera angles all along the way smart smart yeah. move mm-hmm. um i don't know like if you demade uh like mario odyssey into like a mario 64 sequel directly something like that i do like and i know that mark's answer would be the um that nes prototype they did of breath of the wild when they like basically made the whole game out in that weird cool engine they did, I think something like that could be cool. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think like it's easy to go to like the old IP that already had that like establishment. I'm trying to think like a brand new IP that's been like more like PS3, PS4 era. Well, you know, around that time, I can't even think of like a newer IP besides Death Stranding because you just said it, <laughs> dude. Bloodborne as a PS1. Like, I don't know what it would equate to there. Like a silent, think Silent Hill, but Bloodborne with Bloodborne's combat in there. Be wild. PT. It's eight bit. Eight bit. It's eight bit top mm-hmm. down, and you kept in like the entire thing is all black, but you just see the same hallway, and you keep looping it. <laughs> yeah. You could probably do that. Like uh, you've seen World of Horror, that like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. do PT in that style. You could do uh, ukulele as like an N64 game. Call it Banjo-Kazooie. A good idea. <laughs> um, what the fuck else? What big games have come out in the last? Like, what are the, what are the ones? We talked oh, about Horizon dude. earlier. Let's um, do like a top-down bullet hell battle royale. Oh. I don't know. Like, what game? Like, I don't know. 
PUBG, whatever, but like 16 bit, but it's all top down, mm -hmm. huge map, and then it's just a like bullet hell. And it depends on your weapon, like a shotgun has that blast. Yeah, yeah, assault yeah. Assault rifle scattered. And the circle's just constantly closing. And the sniper rifle lets you like zoom in on your like it moves your character oh, in the yeah. corner so you see more of the map. That's pretty good. How does design a game? There you go. Fuck. See? See? It's not that hard. Natty <laughs> Ice's one three one. Yeah. Natty Ice one three ones eight bit battle rate got it got a name there you, yeah trademark Trade, yeah get the by the website now man get, get, that, <laughs> get that scribble on the wall <sighs> i'm looking i, I always think i always like that tony hawk 2 game boy advance game i keep seeing it i'm like that was a good little a good that, game that's yeah, a, that good a good definition of a yeah. yeah um what i'm kind of glad i came up with that idea near automata as a Oh shit! Uh, you all right? Yep. All right. Gotta fix something. Hmm. I really, I'm trying to think like, what would a, uh, what would like a like a near RPG look like? I'm trying to think of how you customize it because I felt like the combat got kind of got samey. In near, so, yeah. Yeah, like you, you can do like some with the nine S, like him being a party it. member. But like A two and two B are too similar, I think. Yeah. Uh, do some of the twins, uh, the twins, oh, like yeah. later, like you know, like game number three, and you know, the the third part of the trilogy of near automata. They can be the healers. Hmm. New, new, new. I'm trying to think new. We can put a pen in it until next week. Think on different ones. Think on different ideas. I really like my PUBG idea. I know. I like that one a lot. Uh, if you've got an answer, you can email us. Podcast at thefreecheese.com. Uh, we'll read it on the air. I don't know what else, dude. I don't know. What would be like a good like Dead by Daylight? Uh, back, like, I don't, I don't have a choice to genre, but like make it like fucking Resident Evil 1 graphics running yeah. around. Or fucking Sweet Home. You know, Resident Evil's predecessor graphics. Make it real. You could do some shit. Uh, you can also go to thefreecheese.com. Uh, check out our previous episodes and previous content. Follow us on Twitter. The Free Cheese is at Some Free Cheese. Matt is at MattyIce131. I am at The Free Cheese. Dude, they already did it, but you can make a Shenmue 3 fighter. They did it as a DLC thing. <laughs> Because it's just it's just Street Fighter, and then put on a thing called a Dreamcast. <laughs> I could be okay with that. They need uh, you gonna make a Shenmue Four. Yeah. Do you think it's being made right now? Yeah. All right. Um. Well, that's gonna do it for us. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, go enjoy Doom. Enjoy Animal Crossing. Enjoy everything. And we'll be back in another week. What are you playing? I'm gonna beat Doom today, hopefully. And Animal Crossing. I might. I'm gonna finish that demo for RE3 and see if it like pushes me over the edge or if I'm like satiated. I'm. Uh, I've decided. Because I do want to replay Doom stuff too. So. Yeah. Uh, I've decided that I'm just gonna watch some streamer. Don't know which one yet, but some streamer play RE3 because eh, I'm never gonna get through it. I got like two hours into RE2 and then Misrex came and that was the end of that. So I can't imagine what Nemesis chasing you constantly is gonna look like. Yeah. So uh, that's fine. Yeah, uh, I will enjoy a watch through of that. DLC for Control came out, oh, and yeah. I wanted to t uh, touch it before recording, but I never got around to it. Yeah, because uh, I was beating Doom. So I think I'm gonna download that, get the pass, so that way I'm ready for the next batch of it as well. Um, but yeah, the f uh, the foundation for Control. I think I'm gonna. Mm. Play around with that. It'd be cool to come back to that game. And then, uh, I, get out is not get out. Fucking hire me or whatever. The get a job. Good what job. A, good job. Yeah. <laughs> the game's just lingering in my head. And it, it, the past like two days here, it's just been lingering. Like, I kind of want to play it. So, yeah. I, I've kept almost, I keep going to the eShop. Like, and I know very well, like, in three months, it will pop up my humble bumble, humble bundle. Or on Game Pass or something, but yeah, I'm gonna play it. I don't. I feel like that was published by Nintendo. I might be wrong. Oh, or whatever. But yeah. like, I wouldn't be shocked if I saw it somewhere in like yeah. three months. But nah, fuck it. I'll get it. Looks fun. 
Yeah, no, I, know I, one or two I players. I'm curious about how they did the two player thing. Yeah, I think I saw it when I looked up the information for it for the price. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's it for us. Uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you for hanging out and listening. Stay safe. Stay inside. Have fun playing video games. Drink some Coke Energies. That's all I got. It's all I've been drinking. Hell yeah! Like I, I haven't. I feel like I'm like betraying the 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 mark of the beast. It's okay. It's not okay. The mark of the beast is my go-to. Good old Monster Energy drink. It's good to have different go-tos. It's good. I need to return. Next week, I'm having a monster on the show. There you go. All right. We'll be back next week. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener, for listening. We're out.